Welcome to Digital Hospitality. I'm your host, Sean Walchef, owner of Cali Barbecue Media, and I am here with Deuce Raymond of Deuce is Wild, and we're here to talk about how to bottle your own barbecue sauce. One of the most requested pieces of content. We did a barbecue sauce video two years ago. I get emails multiple times a week saying, I'm ready to get in the sauce business. <laughs> and you're laughing. Why are you laughing? You're, you're, in, you're a sauce family. You're a legacy family in the sauce business. Yes. Quick, tell everybody your, your, your legacy story of, of sauce before so, you got to here. Sure. So I'm Deuce Raymond. My father's the chef who created Sweet Baby Ray's. And I've been in and around the barbecue business basically my whole life. When we first started the restaurant, Dave would give me a hard time about, look at what your dad's created. What have you created? <laughs> so I started with that, with the mustard sauce actually, and we just started using it in here and in competitions and on specials and things like that. And so you came up with the ingredients. That's right. You didn't have a bottler. You didn't have a no. co-packer. No. So give us give us the play-by-play. -play. So give us some steps that people can take. So they have First, a recipe. First, you have to get the recipe. You get something that you like, number yes. one, and then someone else, another person on earth, has to like it. Yes, if somebody you're, that, that a, a trusted opinion too. And it's, it's not a friend or family. Right, member. and it goes. So you need a name for your sauce, a label. So my sister is the designer who designed the logo and the label, and then you need a company that can print the labels. So what I would do, what I did first is I made the sauce and labeled it and packed it ourselves before we went to a co-packer. Got it. And we're actually right in the process of firming everything up with our first co-packer right now. But that's the process that I used. You can do, we do it this all in-house right now as it is. So make is this a UPC code or no? Yes. Yes, this is. Yes. So you, tell us about a UPC code. Why is that so important? You have to. You can't sell anything without it. No, you can't sell anything without it. You want to legitimize it. yourself, you need one of these. Yes. And? A website. And what's this? All this fun The stuff. Nutrition Facts. Oh yeah, you don't get a UPC without Nutrition Facts. And that will come updated. Mine, on my whole label is going to change. Once you get your recipe dialed in the way you want to make it, then you have to present it to a co-packer and they have to duplicate it. The way they make things in a co-packing plant is nothing like we make them in a professional kitchen. It's nothing the same. So it took me 10 times to get these recipes done. They would make a recipe and then I'd say, nope, it's got to be more sweet. It's got to be thinner. It's got to be thicker. You know, it took us 10 separate times for them to try to get it. Then when it was all said and done, I'm like, yes, you did it. They showed me the ingredients and the first two ingredients was corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup. And I said, nope, nope. <laughs> it's not going to be that way. So then we had to go to the draw drawing board again. So that process takes a while. So what would you say to someone that's watching this video? You just gave them the first steps, but what advice would you have to someone that wants to sell their own, bottle their own barbecue sauce? Because I'll tell you what my advice is. <laughs> my advice is if you're really dead set on it, come up with a plan. Where are you going to sell this sauce? Once you have it all labeled and bottled, I would make sure you know what you're gonna do with it. I have a backup plan. Because if nobody else buys the sauce, the restaurant and the catering can buy the sauce. So I have a fallback position. I have a couple stores that buy it, but nothing. You have to buy 4,000 pounds of sauce at one time. That's the minimum amount to buy. So you need to have a place where you're going to sell it. Right now, like I said, I have a backup because we sell it every day. We use it on the product in the restaurant and in the catering business. So I'm not, it's gonna save me money to go to a co-packer because yeah. right now I'm doing all this in-house anyways paying people 18 20 dollars an hour to do it yeah so i'm in a good spot there if you got nowhere else to sell it um you better start being uh really digitally savvy so, so <laughs> I, I teed him up with that question we just did a restaurant influencers episode for entrepreneur magazine he has a quarter of a million TikTok followers i talked to two gentlemen that want to sell sauce both in different parts of the country and what i told them was instead of selling a sauce, start a TikTok channel. Start a TikTok channel, start making content, start documenting the process of your sauce business because that is something that is much lower entry, much lower barrier to Way entry. Lower. And it can open you up to customers that ultimately will end up being right. people that might finance your sauce business, that might follow you, that might buy your sauce online. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What do you think about that advice? That's the best advice. <laughs> That's the best advice. <laughs> yes. There it is. So if you want to get in the sauce business, change what you're thinking and get into the sauce content business. 
That's a good idea. And then you can thank Deuce and restaurant influencers and, and Cali Barbecue.